The amount of fish food that you feed your fish is the simplest thing that you can do and probably the thing that will have the greatest impact on the overall health of your fish and the aquarium. Now I actually did make this video a few years ago and I rewatched that video last week and thought I could do a much better job with this video. Now that video was okay and I did really explain in that video how much to feed your fish and I kind of did a lot of math. I had like a whiteboard next to me and I had like calculations and formulas or whatever. So if you're really nerdy and if you wanna understand exactly how much fish food you should be feeding, watch that video and I'll put a link of it up there because that's gonna break it down as far as like, you know, you need to feed them like this many grams as an example. But this is kind of more in general, how much you should feed your fish, how often you should feed your fish and kind of some different factors can, to consider. Now, the first thing that we wanna think about when we're thinking about our fish and how much to feed is the kind of fish that we have. Do we have large fish, small fish, active fish, growing fish, etc. So when it comes to fish, we need to think about their behavior. Are they an active fish that's swimming all around and burning lots of calories, uh, fighting all the time, trying to breed and spawn? That's a fish that's going to need to eat more because it wants to, or it doesn't want to, but it needs to have fuel to sustain its activity. Just like you and I, if we're going to be active and run and hike and lift weights or whatever, we're gonna be hungry. We need to fuel our muscles, fuel our body. If we're gonna sit around all day for the weekend and watch Netflix and not do anything, our appetite may wane a little bit because we are not moving and we don't need that same caloric um, uh, input or amount in our body because we're not really using it. So the same thing with fish, you need to think about that. If you've got a slow moving fish, that's kind of hiding out under a rock, under a piece of wood, behind a plant, doesn't do a lot, not spawning. It's not gonna need that same amount of food that that faster moving fish is gonna need. Now, the other thing we need to consider is where that fish is in its lifespan. So young fish, old fish, medium fish, it could be like a Dr. Seuss book. But anyway, so you, you know, if, if you have a full grown adult fish or a fish that's you know at adult size, it doesn't need to eat as much because it's not growing anymore. Just like a, a newborn baby or a little baby or a toddler, they're kind of eating all the time. They've got to eat often because they are growing. Not only do they need calories to sustain their activity and everything that they're doing, but they also have to add on mass size growth. Their bones are growing, their muscles are growing, their organs are growing, etc. So they need additional food versus a full grown human adult that is done growing. And the only thing that we're gonna grow by eating a lot is either muscles if we're working out a lot or our fat if we're just sitting around watching Netflix. So we wanna make sure that uh, those adult fish don't eat as much as a younger fish. So my advice is for full grown fish that are adults or adult size, feed them once per day. And if they're juvenile fish, meaning like a teenager or a, like a young teenager. So again, thinking about humans, like you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 years old, whatever they're still growing, so they need to eat more often. So I feed my juvenile fish, or I try to feed them twice per day because they're moving around more. Now the baby fish, what we call fry, need to eat more often, just like human babies need to eat more often. I like to feed my fry three times per day. A Couple of reasons, one, they're growing at a much faster rate. Baby fish need to grow as quickly as possible to add size, to avoid predation, to make sure that they're not staying small for a long time so that they're not gonna be eaten by some other animal, some other fish as an example. And depending on that type of fish, they may need to hurry up and grow because of the life cycle and the spawning cycle. They might need to be ready to spawn by next spring as an example, so they've gotta put on a bunch of size rather quickly. So baby fish, I like to feed them three times per day. The other reason why we wanna feed them often is because their bodies are smaller, they don't have as much body mass, they don't have the ability to store those calories like if like a larger fish um, is able to do. So again, feeding them more often is gonna be critical. Now besides the fish and their behavior and their where they are in their life cycle or whatever, the other thing that's very important to think about when we're thinking about how much to feed our fish or how often is what kind of food we are feeding. Are we feeding frozen food? Are we feeding live food? Are we feeding fresh food? Are we feeding uh, dry food, like flake food, pellet food, granules, wafers, uh, 
rafts, floating sticks, whatever it may be, um, they all have a different application. They're all made from different ingredients and their ability to remain in the aquarium will gr greatly uh, vary. So let's start with live food. You can put a lot of live food in the aquarium because depending on the fish, because that food is not gonna spoil because it's alive as long as it's not going to die in the water. So if you had feeder fish as an example, and if you put the feeder fish in the aquarium and your larger fish doesn't eat them all, those feeder fish will just kind of swim around until they get eaten. So whether it's a day later or a week later, it's not gonna matter because those fish are just in there and they're not fouling up the water by rotting, they're just living. Um, other things like snails and maybe like Daphne as an example, um, you could put a bunch of them in the water because they can just kind of swim around or crawl around until they're eaten and it's uh, really not an issue. Now the next thing we'll talk about is frozen foods and typically when we're talking about frozen foods, frozen foods are usually like a high protein frozen food like uh, shrimp or worms or something like that. So. In that case, we wanna make sure that we're putting a smaller amount of food in there, something that the fish will eat very quickly within a couple of minutes or so because we do not want that food sitting in there for hours. Now, if you were to drop like a blood worm, uh, you know, cube in there and if it sat in there for 10, 15 minutes, it's not that big of a deal, it's fine, it's not gonna rot. But you don't want that blood worm to be sitting in that tank for four, five, six, eight hours because it will start to rot, it will start to break down, and it will foul the water. So things like that, you wanna also make sure that they eat rather quickly. Now, when we're talking about fresh foods, we're talking really about vegetables. So if I were to take a zucchini and peel it and slice it and blanch it, which means boil for a short amount of time, like half cook, and put that in a tank with imbuna or a placostomus or something, it could sit in there all day. It could sit in there overnight and probably by the next day it'll be gone. And it's not that big of a deal because it's just a vegetable. Now, yes, it is gonna break down and eat over a longer period of time, two or three days, it could start to rot, but the fish have already eaten it by then. So if you have a piece of zucchini that you put in the tank and it's a large and it's something that the fish can't eat at once, if it nibbles on it, over the day and through the night. Um, by the next day, it's fine, they're full, and you put a lot more than they could eat at once, but it wasn't going to rot, so it wasn't really an issue, no concern there. Now, the majority of you are using a dry food, and the reason why we use dry foods, one, they're really easy. It's just you know a pellet, a flake, something that is you can sit on a shelf or underneath the cabinet in your aquarium or on top of the aquarium. And it's something that you can just open it up, feed it to your tank and put it right back where it was. You don't have to do anything, prepare it, cook it, freeze it, keep it in the refrigerator, nothing. It's just in the package, high, highly nutritious and very easy to use and relatively inexpensive for the amount of food that you have. So it is a very good option. The issue that we have sometimes is when we read the package and it says feed your fish what they can eat in two to three minutes, three times per day. I think sometimes the fish companies put, or the food companies put that on there because they want you to feed the fish often. Maybe you're overfeeding your fish and most people do overfeed their aquariums. And it means that you have to buy more fish food, which is more profitable for the fish food company, obviously. My recommendation is to go back to what I said at the beginning of this video and look at that once, twice, and thrice, meaning once for the adult fish, twice for juveniles, three times for the babies. Now, as far as how much to feed your fish, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. In that other video that I talked about, that's where we got into breaking down by weight and body mass and that whole calculation. But basically, to keep it simple, with a dry food, you wanna feed your fish basically about 1% of their body weight. Now, you're not gonna weigh your fish and you're not going to weigh your fish food. I can't imagine anyone taking out their little kitchen scale and measuring out one gram of food to feed to their Oscar or something like that. That's not realistic, but you can kind of look at your fish and get an idea about how much that fish weighs and what 1% of that of that fish food would be. Um, there's like, like different tricks about like looking at the eyeballs of the fish and you can look at the eyeballs and say, now oh, the two eyeballs on my fish are roughly about the same size as maybe six pellets. So I'll give that fish six pellets as an example. I've got 10 fish in there, so I need to feed the equivalent of about 60 pellets as an example. So that's kind of one way to do it. Um, you know, again, to think of all those other factors that I talked about, but also when you look at your fish, think about the body mass. So 
one Oscar cichlid is going to weigh probably as much as 200 cardinal tetras or something like that, or probably more than that even, probably 500 cardinal tetras. So what you feed one fish might be the same amount that you would feed 500 fish, depending on that fish size and the overall mass of the fish. So as I said, this was kind of a general, more broken down, simplified understanding of how much to feed your fish. Again, if you want to get into the nerdy, the crunching of the numbers and look at that other video. Now what I will say, and it's very important, is to really observe your aquariums and observe your, observe your fish and look at them and try to learn from them, right? A big part of keeping aquariums is being engaged with them. You know, obviously they're beautiful to look at and they're like, you know, decorations or pieces of art, but they're living creatures. They're, you know, living tanks sometimes with plants and things like that. So we really want to understand what's going on, on with our fish. So you can look at your fish and really learn like, are they eating all the food that I put in there? Am I finding waste food, you know, that's kind of floating around and getting sucked up into the filters? Am I having to do water changes more often because the water is getting fouled? Are my fish getting fat? Am I noticing other behaviors? So really try to observe and then you can kind of tweak it here and there. And the amount of fish food that you feed your fish is the simplest thing that you can do and probably the thing that will have the greatest impact on the overall health of your fish and the aquarium. Obviously, if you feed too much, not good. If you feed too little, not good. So you gotta find that sweet spot and it's really kind of experimenting around with every aquarium and every fish tank. So um, anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like this video, don't forget to like it, to share it, um, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already, and then make sure to check out some of those other videos that I linked down below so that you can see some other videos on fish food. That's all it for now. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.